بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم جميعا معكم دكتورة نوفل سعيد I'm the head of the quality indicator program at the quality and accreditation directorate Ministry of Health Today, I will talk to you about one of the most important topics in medicine, which is the economic burden of venous thromboembolism, which is abbreviated as VTE. Therefore, we will go through the following agenda. I will introduce few statistics, and then I'll go through the importance of the VTE, and what is meant by disease, economic burden, and then I will show you some of the important classification or categorization of VDE, and the factor that is affecting the VTE economic burden. And then we will go through the, some statistic of the cost of the VTE worldwide, and an overview through the GCC country. At the end, I will conclude the presentation, and I'll be glad to hear any question. So let's get started. According to the latest review of CDC in 2023, the number of people affecting per year with VTE is around 900,000, and the mortality rate per year is between 60,000 to 100,000 of people. Those with VTE, 33% of them will go through long-term complication. And 33% of people with VTE, either DVT or pulmonary embolism, will have a recurrence within 10 years. Therefore, it is very important to highlight the economic burden of VTE. Why is that? Because it's frequent, it is recurrent, costly, yet preventable. In general, what do we mean by disease economic burden? It's not only the medical cost of the disease, it's the cost and the consequences of the VTE on the patient and their family. Therefore, in order to measure the VTE economic burden, we have to answer uh, three important questions. What are the direct and the indirect cause of the disease on the household? How do the patient cope with the disease? And what's the impact of the disease cost and the coping strategies on the patient and their family? So the burden of the VTE is not, again, it's not the medical cost itself, it's the productivity losses that affect the patients, their families, and the society as a whole. Now I will talk briefly about the classification of the economic burden of VTE. There are a lot of classification actually, but I thought presenting this classification is more, uh, is more easier for us as a healthcare worker to be understandable. The economic burden can be classified into direct cause and indirect cause. The direct cause is subclassified into medical cause that is covered by the insurance or not covered by the insurance. And the non-medical cost, which is meant by the transportations and the healthcare worker who need to be paid in order to see the patients and take care of them. Also, there is indirect cause. And this is what we mean by the productivity loss during to disability and morbidity and also the productivity loss due to premature mortality. Another classification of the VTE economic burden is that health system expenditures, productivity cost, and other costs. And the health system expenditures or cost depends where the patient is admitted as inpatient or as an outpatient. 
In an inpatient, of course, he will need a medical cost, the cost of the healthcare workers, the pharmaceutical costs such as, and it depends also on the types of the drugs that is used, the duration and the dose, of course, room cost, and the more the patients stay or hospitalized in the, in the hospital, the more cost will be. We have the investigation cost, whether it is a lab cost or radiological cost. And of course, one of the most important things is the complication cost, as complication from the disease VTE itself or the treatment of the VTE prophylaxis, such as bleeding. And there is another factors also, the inpatient cost will be uh, affected. And this factor is whether the, it is initial episode or it is a recurrent episode. Another cost is the outpatient cost, the number of visits of the patients to the uh, hospital, uh, the pharmaceutical cost, the lab cost, and so. One of the most important economic costs that we might not feel it, but the patient and their family will feel that is the productivity cost. The patient, if he gets affected with VTE, he will have um, more, uh, either يعني, there will be a death or there will be a morbidity and disability. And this will affect his daily work. So there will be a high rate of sick leaves, and therefore his income will be decreased. Also, the workplace try to overcome this, um, uh, this absence and try to find another worker in order to do the work. There will be a searching cost, there will be a hiring cost, and a training cost. Other financial costs, we might not feel it here in Kuwait, but it's the taxation lost by the country. If the patient is not able to work, then he will not be able to pay the tax for the country. So this is also another economic burden. Now, most of the healthcare expenditures are due to VTE recurrence and complications. This will lead to a higher rate of medical cost, investigation, pharmaceutical cost, room cost, and complications cost. Again, whether it is the first episodes or a recurrent episodes. Let's take an example. For example here, the cost of managing an initial episode of DVT is estimated to be 7,712 to till 10,000. Another example is the treatment of initial PE event will cost around 10,000 till 16,000. Another estimate from another study showed that the management of acute VTE in patient with cancer, with comorbid disease, will cost more than 20. So it is very costly. As we mentioned, the cost will depend whether the episode is as initial episode or it's the recurrent. If it's recurrent, it means that there will be frequent readmission. And a study showed that between 10% till 30% of survivors with acute VTE will develop a recurrent VTE within five years. The economic burden of VTE is primarily driven by the development of complications and the length of the stay. Therefore, it is very, pre very important to try to prevent VTE, try to diagnose it, and try to use the proper VTE prophylaxis in order to reduce the length of stay. Now I'll show you a few uh, cost of managing the VTE in different countries. For example, in the UK, the VTE cost around 640 million per year. In US, diagnosis and treatment only of VTE cost reach to 50 million per year. In Australia, the VTE cost, including 
the loss of productivity estimated with 1.72 billion per year. And when there is a loss of well-being, for example, disability and premature death, the annual cost will be around 20 billion. Now, as can you see, this is a study done showing the relationship between the type of VTE prophylaxis use, the length of stay, and the hospital cost. As we mentioned before, the VTE cost is really related to the length of stay. So if we, if we give the proper VTE prophylaxis, we will reduce the length of stay, and therefore we will reduce the hospital cost. Here, we, they, they took like a medically ill patients, and they give them the proper VTE prophylaxis of two kinds. One group, they gave them the, you know, let me show you here. So one group, they gave them the uh, endopraxin prophylaxis, and the other group, they gave them the unfractionated heparin. Okay, and it shows that the, the cost of the index hospitalization, which means the first hospitalization in endopraxin is less than in the unfractionated heparin, whether it is in the unadjusted cost or adjusted cost. What do you mean by unadjusted cost? It means that I, they took all the patients, the medically ill patient, regardless of their age, of their complications, of their prognosis. And when they did adjust, adjustment, that means they took the patient with the same uh, age group or with the same, uh, medic, uh, with the same uh, prognosis, it showed also that using the uh, enoxoparaxine prophylaxis showing less hospital or total hospitalization, whether it is first hospitalization or recurrent, within 90 days. Therefore, the length of a stay is decreased and the, accordingly the hospital cause decreased. Therefore, it is important to say that VTE can cause significant global economic burden, mainly because it needs a multiple diagnostic test and treatment, because of its prolonged hospital stay and follow-up care, because of disability and the long-term morbidity. So it's not only the medical cost. Let's take an overview in the GCC country. Unfortunately, full economic evaluation of VTE economic burden is not uh, uh, available uh, because, and, or, it, or it is of limited number. And one of the causes of that, because it is not a mandatory regulatory requirement for licensing for the medical center or pricing of the uh, medical uh, pharmaceutical drugs. So there is no available full economic uh, studies. However, this one study is done in Saudi Arabia uh, showing the total hospital cost for the uh, nursing, lab, uh, doctors, uh, and medication cost in uh, US dollar. And they showed here, uh, they took two groups actually, one group was giving the low molecular weight heparin, and the other uh, group were giving the unfractionated heparin. As you can see here, those who are receiving the low molecular weight have in total cost less than those who are having the unfractionated. Therefore, Less cost is because that there is a, a reduced length of a stay and improvement of the patient, so the cost will be reduced. Let me conclude this presentation. Worldwide, VTE is a leading cause of death and disability. Up to 20% of cancer patients will develop it. 
globally up to 60% of VTE occurs within 90 days of hospital discharge. And VTE is number one of the preventable death in hospital. Therefore, my colleagues, it is very important to improve the risk assessment and prevention strategies. It is very important to do the implementation of hospital risk assessment. And finally, it is very important to use the proper anticoagulation and to use the available guidelines in order to reduce the length of stay and hospital cost and prevent the VTE and treat it and prevent its recurrence. It's a message I would like to say that VTE is costly with high mortality and complication. Therefore, prevention should be a national quality improvement and research priority. Thank you very much.